InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, May 13th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Joe Biden's son is appointed to the board of Ukraine's largest gas producer. Then, a reminder that the Obama administration has killed many more children than Boko Haram. And police tase a grandmother at a birthday party. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And because you act like a bunch of naive chumps, this whole thing's going to come down on us. Well, the world has been watching the situation unfold in the Ukraine. Of course, that comes with a lot of questions. Were the globalists involved in overthrowing the democratically elected government there? Did George Soros and the State Department have their hand helping to install the current junta that is, of course, being led by a bankster? It's just a shell game that we have been highly suspicious of since the beginning. And, of course, letting you know that they are definitely the U.S., the West, the banksters, the globalists. They're all there for their own political motivations. And here, just further evidence of that. Joe Biden's son has just been appointed to the board of Ukraine's largest gas producer. That's right. The global elite do not waste any time trying to disguise their efforts to gobble up Ukraine's natural resources. Now, Hunter Biden will lead the legal team of Burisma Holdings. They're the largest natural gas producer in Ukraine. Biden is a lawyer with insider connections to the financial industry and the government. See, it's not just Harry Reid's sons who are enjoying all that nepotism. Now, uh, large transnational corporations like agricultural giant Cargill and Monsanto have joined the effort to improve the investment climate on the Russian border. This uh, effort was spearheaded by the U.S. Ukraine Foundation, which is a nonprofit NGO funded in part by ExxonMobil, Coca-Cola, and Raytheon. But of course, the government continues their gaslighting, saying, no, we're not there to line our own pockets. It's not politically motivated. We want to help the people of the Ukraine. We're just there to help the people. Now, just last month, Joe Biden was in Ukraine. He was there, of course, to show support for the junta that's led in part by fascists and ultra-nationalists. Prior to his mission, a White House rep said, there are currently ongoing threats to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and the most effective response to that is for all of Ukraine to pull together. Now, beyond all of that standard political rhetoric about democracy and freedom, Biden's trip was really about securing the proper investment climate in the Ukraine. That's what that was actually about, as well as accelerating the construction of a new pipeline. Hmm, where have we heard that scenario before? You know, they uh, did the same thing with Syria. They wanted to help those Syrian children. Really, it was about the pipeline. Now, this is the exact same reason that we're all of a sudden hearing about Boko Haram. Boko Haram hasn't been, you know, just recently kidnapping and killing school children. This has been going on for years. Um, and of course, globalists, now they have their designs on all of the resources there in Africa. So they're using their typical ploy of tugging on the heartstrings of humanitarian intervention, which of course will lead to military intervention. And of course, this will all be obvious when you look at how the activity of the IMF and the World Bank in Nigeria, um, they've been there. And despite Nigeria being really rich in oil, most of the people there live on less than $2 a day. And that's because all of the wealth is being transferred to these transnational companies, namely Shell. And the Nigerian people themselves are then exploited, raped, tormented, and intimidated by the Nigerian state. Now, suspiciously, the IMF managing director, Christine Lagarde, was in Nigeria just days before the Nigerian president, Jonathan Goodluck, removed fuel subsidies. When he did that, it tripled the cost of fuel and caused widespread unrest. And in response to that fuel subsidy cut, Occupy Nigeria formed in 2012, and of course, political activism really took off. Now, F. William Engdahl writes, the IMF and Washington have forced one of the poorest economies in Africa to impose a huge tax on its citizens on the implausible argument that it will help eliminate corruption in the state petroleum sector. Now, of course, the IMF knows that the elimination of subsidies isn't gonna do anything to stop corruption in high places. 
And more than government corruption, the move, according to Engdahl and others, is an effort to undercut China and sabotage its efforts to build an oil refinery in the country. And just to underscore these points that yes, the globalists do have their eye on Africa and they do have plans for exploiting their natural resources even more, let me remind you about the Bilderberg agenda from 2013. There they had a vague reference to Africa's challenges. So when I saw that, I knew indeed that this year we would definitely be seeing some globalist reach into the country. Now they've been exploiting Africa forever, giving the states just a little bit of power so that they can oppress their people and keep the people fighting amongst themselves so they won't actually fight the real enemy there. So, you know, they've definitely got their globalist agenda. We know what starts at Bilderberg changes the world. You know, no, it doesn't. It's just a meeting of the minds. They're just out there playing golf. They're not, you know, planning to destroy countries and take them down. And also to just continue pointing out that this is a globalist, their globalist plan. It doesn't have anything to do now with radical Islamists, which is what we're hearing being pushed now in the mainstream media. Again, radical Islam, it's like the the catch-all, the go-to, if you really want to ramp people up to go to war, you say, oh, got to get those Islamic terrorists. Now, even though Clinton said years ago that she fought to not put Boko Haram on the terrorist list. Now, others are starting to ask questions about this. They're saying it's all a little suspicious. Um, for starters, the number of the girls who were taken away by the self-described Islamist radical Boko Haram it keeps changing. First, it was 129 girls that were rescued, then 121, and eight were missing. Then the next day, they said none had been rescued at all. No collective photos of the girls appears to exist. Uh, the girls who did manage to escape, they have conflicting reports of when they were actually taken. A week ago, police stated that 276 girls remain missing and 53 escaped. And this number could change again, according to the commissioner, because it's hard to say how many girls uh, were there since so many girls from different schools were taking their exams in this one place. And this place happens to be an area where all the other schools in the area shut down because Boko Haram had been slaughtering school children there. They had been slaughtering school children, so they shut all the other schools down, and then they announce that they're going to be holding these exams for all the girls to come and take their tests at this one particular school. Of course, that's just going to set them up as a target. So all of these things are causing many Nigerians to ask questions, and then they're saying that the Nigerian government is um, engaging in counter-propaganda. But of course, now it has caught the attention of celebrities, it's global attention, they've got their hashtag bring back our girls with Michelle Obama out there. So now they can really push for this. But former Congressman Alan West has questioned the timing of this saying that it's fishy. And now the Obama administration wants to focus on this group all of a sudden. He pointed out that the incident didn't just happen. And he reminded us that Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State, refused to declare Boko Haram a terrorist organization. And he suggests the White House is trying to divert attention from Benghazi and all the other scandals that are facing the administration, saying we are witnessing an Obama wag the dog moment. Put the village behind her. Give me some flames, some sound of screaming. That's good. We can link that to the press. They can downlink it on Telstar 401 Transporter 21. And this just in, a news break special report from the Albanian front. We've just received information that the young Albanian national fleeing in this video is attempting to escape terrorist reprisals in her village. So wag the dog. It's a perfect example. This is what they do time and again. They use these diversion tactics. They prop up the rebel groups that are there destabilizing the country so then they can go in and intervene militarily. It's all a tactic that they use. And we actually saw it here domestically with Sandy Hook. Alex, we've never had a time in our history where Sandy Hook, a school massacre, the biggest illusion ever portrayed by Homeland Security and FEMA, it can bring down the house. I think America, I cannot tell America, this is, this is probably our only chance to unite and come together and look for the truth. And this house needs to fall because Sandy Hook is taking away our guns across the country.
country. Sandy Hook is messing with our freedom of speech. That's not the America that we, you and I know, Alex. And they raise hundreds of millions of dollars, billions in the case of 9-11, collecting money off of people's goodwill and then giving it to anti-gun groups. The United Way is an anti-gun cesspit. It is, and I hope nobody ever donates another dime to United Way until they answer every question. So there it is, in your face, pseudo-reality, totally fabricated, but that never stops the globalists. If you actually wake up to their fabrication, they don't care, they're just gonna keep plugging away at their takeover and just hammering it in your head that you aren't trendy or you're racist if you question any of their policies. Now, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, a few months back, now Glenn Greenwald is saying the exact same thing. He says, when Hillary Clinton becomes president, it's, you're gonna be sexy if you question her policies, just like, you know, if you question Obama, you're a racist. Well, now they're putting in Hillary crying sexism if you question any of her policies. And he's convinced that she's going to be president. Western women will fully back her. And you can already see how they're really ramping up the whole feminist movement to prop up this situation to make you feel like if you question her, then you're just, you're, you're not trendy. You're a racist, sexist bigot. Um, Greenwald goes even further and says that it's going to be really funny when after Hillary, they will elect a gay president so they can just keep using this same tactic over and over again to oppress your freedom of speech and let you know that you're just committing thought crime if you question this pseudo reality that they're putting out there. And that is exactly what we do here at InfoWars. We expose the globalists, we expose their plans, we want to wake you all up to this pseudo reality that they're trying to fabricate around all of us. It's time for all of us to stop falling for their tactics and look beyond look beyond this false reality and see that it's all just part of the machine. Now, coming up later in the show, we're gonna expose the true bosses running this police state that has gone wild. And then Wolfgang Haubig, he gets confronts some of these out of control police who are proving that they're not out there protecting you or I and working to serve and protect the citizens of the United States of America. They are there to serve and protect the globalist corporations that are running this country and this world. Now that's coming up right after this. a programmable guy that goes and watches Olympus is Falling and believes all this and really thinks you're a hero. G.I. Joe, great American hero. Yo, Joe. You don't work for Joe. Joe got taken over. The G.I. Joe command base is run by Cobra. Do you understand that? And I use a child analogy to get through to you because that's your main programming template in North America. They're on record with that. That was all Pentagon directed. You understand, you work for Cobra. You dress like Cobra. You have the tactics of Cobra. You are Cobra. Hail Cobra. You want to be little boys? Or do you want to really join the Republic? They know what's going on at the Bundy Ranch, and they won't even let a police information officer give us any information. That's a bunch of bullshit. It's all these stupid G.I. Joe movies and stuff where the White House is attacked. The White House is run by Cobra. When I went through the process of becoming press secretary, one of the things, one of the first things they told me was, you're not even to acknowledge the drone program. You're not even to discuss that it exists. It's run by chaos. It's run by Spectre. Special executive for counterintelligence, terrorism, revenge, extortion. They run little kids. They run the snuff films. They run the drugs. They run it all. And because you act like a bunch of naive chumps, this whole thing's going to come down on us. Very much concerns me, considering that they have all this bulk ammunition that they're shooting targets of children. Would you like to tell me who it is that is doing this? It is the Department of Homeland Security, sir. Oh, thank you for calling. To every police officer in this country, to every FBI agent, to every Secret Service agent, you work for Spectre. You work for Chaos. You work for Cobra. How do they get power? They stage a terror attack. 
using Spectre, using Cobra. Who is Cobra? Arms dealing, drug dealing, money laundering group, wearing mask. They wear masks, ladies and gentlemen, because they're the corporate CEOs. And they're manipulating the governments against each other. Cobra runs the Muslims. Cobra runs the CIA. Cobra runs it all. Cobra is real. You can call it whatever you want. Cobra is in control of America. And Cobra says the veterans and the gun owners, they're saying that we're the bad guys. These people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. That's what Cobra would say. That's what Spectre would say. Go f*** yourself. Thank you. I'm sorry, thank you. That's what Goldfinger would say, because that's who those people are. I am Supreme Cobra Commander. You call your petty bureaucrats, officials, and authorities. You will kneel before Cobra or face my wrath. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. You pathetic little worm. How dare you call me Mr. Cobra? I just recorded it. I I'm not looking for a problem. I'm going in doing just public okay. work. Yeah. Excuse me? You're a nonprofit organization. I'm gonna have the sergeant come here. Where's my attorney? I'm right here. Here's my attorney. It's a five oh one C three. You have the right to inspect Listen, the books at any time. Let the sergeant come here and figure it out, okay? Well, that, that's the way you can do it. You're not going anywhere. No, no, what, what, right what's now. your law for doing that? They don't want you inside right now. So, so what? They're a nonprofit. They get federal funds. We have the right to figure it out, okay? And he's called many times. Okay. I've called. I've what do you mean you'll figure it out? You're obstructing mm -hmm. us from inspecting the books right of a 501c3. Right, right, now, right, 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 now, right now you're obstructing. They feel threatened by you. That's why we're here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we haven't right. even talked they to feel, them. Look, they look at all Anybody can say anyway, they feel threatened. threatened. That's a bunch. That. And, 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 and we have a job that we have to come here and make sure everything stays peaceful. Mr. Howard, back in okay. Right? Right. I mean, that's fair, correct? Okay, yeah. I'll just go by myself with my attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Let me wait till my sergeant gets here, okay? And then he'll make that determination, well, okay? Well, we're we're going to pull everybody back. Yeah, everybody go away. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Just my attorney. Right. Everybody okay. else, come on back. We are polite, we're very respectful. All we want you is to really be polite and respectful, respectful to me right also. away, either. okay? Let's call well, it when you When you get in my I, face, I didn't don't get in your face. Yeah, you, you came into my face. Are you I, walking to me or am I walking there. towards you now? I'm standing oh, there. Okay. Are you walking no, towards I'm me? I'm looking at you. Okay. I used to be a police officer. Okay, then show me some respect. Okay, how about the same for me? I will. Yeah. When you start showing me some, then I'll start yeah. showing you some. Yeah. I can see it. Right? Yeah. I can see it. Okay. Very polite, very courteous. Yeah. Yes, well, that's fine. That's the way I operate. I hope you do. I do. Okay. We'll have no problems. Yeah. Right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. My name is Wolfgang Halvey. I'm from Lake County, Florida, a town called Sorrento, Florida. I'm a National School Safety Consultant. For the last 25 years, I've traveled the country. And you look at me like I'm here today to create a problem. That's the last thing I want to do. You have an incident that happened on December 14, 2012, as tragic as it was. It got national attention, worldwide attention. I was one of the first people in my community to donate money to your cause. Let me tell you something, when tragedy strikes in any community, the first thing you can do is give money, because it takes money to heal. It took me about a week and a half to get over the shock as to what I saw at Sandy Hook. Board members, I contacted the superintendent two days after the incident. I offered and extended any help they might need, and because I train people on incident command, this is what I do for a living. And I was offering my help. I sent an email. I have sent emails to each one of you board members. I've contacted the superintendent's office, the director of facility. Ladies and gentlemen, not one phone call back from your district. 
not one FOI request that you responded to. You had a man sitting here with the Freedom of Information Act giving you a lesson on what is, what is documents that should be released under public records, and yes, to this day, you have refused to answer phone calls, and you have refused to answer my FOI request. And you're a public education. Do you not teach character education? You use the word honesty in your presentation. Where's the honesty in this room? No matter how tragic that event might have been, people in America deserve the truth. Because guess what? There isn't a school district in America that wants another Sandy Hook happening in their district, not private or parochial. And ladies and gentlemen, the questions I ask are not offensive to any parent who lost a child that day. They're not offensive to the Connecticut State Police. They're not offensive to anyone. They're such simple questions. Why no trauma helicopters? Why would you not let paramedics, board members, these are your children, and you wouldn't let paramedics and EMTs into the building? You got 27 children declared dead within eight minutes? Who does this? Who is so great at that job? And I'll just leave you with that. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the board member. You are the leaders of this community. You are the superintendent. Respond. You have a great secretary. But guess what? I sense in her voice she's afraid. She is afraid to even call me back. That should not be happening in any school district. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here tonight not to disrupt the meeting. We want answers. We want truth. Part of character education that we teach our children, you are modeling responsibility, caring, and I'll quit. Thank you for letting her know. But ladies and gentlemen, character education is about caring, responsibility, honesty. And guess what? You're teaching your children. Why don't you do it the same way and respond? And I thank you for your time. Well, thank you for watching the show tonight. Please continue to help support the info war by becoming a member of Prison Planet TV. Everything we do here, we do because of the support of our viewers. If you go to Prison Planet TV, you can get all of the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, and also our eBooks. And as always, you can share your username and password with up to 11 other people at the same time. So help us fight the info war. There is a war on for your mind, and we're doing our part here. So thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. Tune in to PrisonPlanet.tv for an extended broadcast. When anti-gun advocates try to convince me that the U.S. would be better off with fewer civilian firearms, I immediately point out the explosive gun violence rate in Mexico, not to mention the U.K.'s high number of muggings and home invasions, but that's a story for another time. The right to self-defense is gaining popularity in Mexico as citizens are fighting back against cartels, cartels who attain some of their arms from the Justice Department under Operation Fast and Furious. Even though it's mainstream news that the ATF walked guns into the hands of cartel members, President Obama still tries to convince the citizens of Mexico that the United States' Second Amendment is to blame for the violence south of the border. And we also recognize that most of the guns used to commit violence here in Mexico come from the United States. I think many of you know that in America, our Constitution guarantees our individual right to bear arms. And as president, I swore an oath to uphold that right, and I always will. But at the same time, as I've said in the United States, I will continue to do everything in my power to pass common sense reforms that keep guns out of the hands of criminals and dangerous people that can save lives here in Mexico and back home in the United States. It's the right thing to do. I'm saying uh, that Fast and Furious was meant to, you know, blame uh, the cartel murders on the Second Amendment, not on the fact that guns from the U.S. are helping Mexican citizens defeat the cartels. And people went, what, you're saying now Fast and Furious was good? No, Fast and Furious was the government operation to frame guns bought over the counter for the destabilization of Mexico when it's the gun control and the drug war that's done it. The idea of 1776 worldwide is spreading as people realize that a gun is a tool. 
in the wrong hands, it can be used for oppression. In the right hands, it can be used for liberation. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcode with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.